In the world of shonen anime, there are no shortages of badass characters. Bleach has them, One Piece has them, My Hero Academia has them, and Naruto has them as well. While they may or may not be a major part of their respective storylines, what they do give the viewer is a pure tour de force of excitement before the main characters ever take center stage or become as strong as them. For this video, I've chosen one such character, Zabuza Momochi from the Naruto series. A literal powerhouse hailing from the village hidden in the mist, if I were to sum up the character arc of Zabuza, I would do it through a meme format. Comes in for a single arc, gains the upper hand on Kakashi, leaves us with an emotional backstory, refuses to elaborate further, gets revived and repeats everything all over again, rests in peace as one of the best characters in the series. To me, Zabuza is a character that's the perfect example of quality over quantity. He didn't come in for the long haul, appearing over and over again. Rather, he appeared only twice as an antagonist. His appearances, however, changed my perception of the Naruto series and kept me hooked till the very end. While I didn't know it at that time, but for a brief moment, Naruto had become a sane in anime. It's because of this and many other reasons that I will discuss in this video that I feel that Zabuza warrants a character analysis. So, without further ado, let's dissect Zabuza Momochi for all that he is. First appearances matter. When he was first introduced in the series, Zabuza's entire persona gave off an air of mystery about him. His bandaged face, the pale deadish skin color, and the bandana that showed his affiliation with the mist all gave off an air of apprehension on what was to come. From all appearances, it was clear that he was the protagonist of the Land of Waves arc. Besides that, you had the iconic sword, the Kubikiribocho, a name that I certainly did pronounce on the very first take. Combine that with his 183cm or 6 foot tall frame and you have an individual that, again, is not only mysterious but gives off a hulking persona. This height factor is something that might confuse you right now, but bear with me since I have reasoning for this. Now how does all of that fit in with the storyline? As far as the mystery aspect of his character is concerned, is not just limited to Zabuza himself. Sure, the face mask, the sword, and the body type give off the assassin vibe from the get-go, but the backdrop in which his character was introduced has a lot to do with solidifying his enigmatic personality. To be specific, the Land of Waves arc had a backdrop of mist caused by Zabuza's appearance. In any normal situation, that shouldn't be the case considering the Land of Waves isn't located near the Mist Village, but then again, Konoha's next door neighbor, the Sand, is literally the Arabia of the Narutoverse. Disregarding geographic issues, the Land of Waves had a misty backdrop which kept the Mist Village assassins in their elements, so to speak. Now let's discuss the sword whose name I don't want to butcher yet again. I watched the Naruto series twice, once as a kid and once as a young adult. During the former phase of my life when I looked at Zabuza's sword, the only thing I could think of is that it was cool. It was kind of a throwback to the times when I watched the Scotsman from Samurai Jack fight against Jack. In the latter phase, it was still cool, but there were practical considerations as well. Could he use such a huge sword? Well, turns out he could, and just as well as the Black Swordsman from Berserk. This reference wasn't needed, but I like Berserk, so I thought, why not? Now, you might be confused as to how his height gave Zabuza a hulking persona. In that entire arc, Zabuza was the tallest individual, followed by Kakashi, who was 181 centimeters. As it stands, the two were the most impactful during the entire arc, but if we were to remove Kakashi from the arc, then combining all the character traits that I discussed above, Zabuza indeed gives off a hulking persona, adding Kakashi to the mix. It was certainly a battle between two powerful giants. Now, the initial layer of Zabuza Momochi lies in him being one of the most skilled fighters that the Mist Village has ever produced. In my tier list, I would put him below Kisame Hoshikaki for the simple reason that he he had a lot more fights. His skills are a given, since he was part of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist and was born in an era that showcased the Mist Village as one of the most brutal villages to exist. The village's infamy is something that I will elaborate on in the later sections of this video. In the first encounter between Kakashi and Zabuza, the former didn't spare any time in showcasing his Sharingan. This was a given since Kakashi knew about Zabuza's infamy. Nevertheless, the pressure or key that the both of them gave out in the fight was enough for Sasuke to start sweating. It was at this moment that he realized the true difference between him and the shinobi that were fighting against one another. Zabuza manages to get the upper hand on Kakashi by sealing him in his water prison jutsu for a time. Nevertheless, Kakashi was able to force himself out of the jutsu and take on Zabuza again, this time imitating everything that the latter did. Eventually, he was able to defeat Zabuza, but before landing the final blow, Zabuza was saved by Haku, his comrade. The battle against Zabuza was so intense that Kakashi had to retire for a week to regain his strength since he had used up too much of the Sharingan. In the next round at the bridge, Zabuza came back with a bang and his fighting prowess again forced Kakashi to use his Sharingan. He also used his advanced summoning techniques against him to ensure that he had no chance of escaping. After Haku sacrifices his life to save him, Zabuza still starts to go on the offensive, but is finally defeated by Kakashi who renders both his arms useless. 
The fighting spirit of the shinobi, however, doesn't die out within Zabuza, who targets the freshly arrived Gato and his army of mobsters who come to kill him. In what was truly a homage to Sane in anime, Zabuza, with a single shuriken in his mouth, tears away through the entire army towards Gato, and that too without his hands. What made the scene so interesting to watch was that Zabuza, at the very limit of his abilities, went all out in a monstrous rage. This scene is the reason why I'm making this video since it ties in to one of my other videos, but more on that later. Let's fast forward to Naruto Shibuten, more specifically the Shinobi World War arc where we see Haku and Zabuza revive with the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. Rereading that part of the manga is indeed a treat because of the way both of them ended their battle last time we saw them. While it doesn't show off most of Zabuza's strength from an individual perspective, the battle that ensued had a lot of players, including the barrage from the Seven Swordsmen themselves. While the revival of both Zabuza and Haku might be warranted by Kabuto considering how the former is a skilled assassin whose silent killing is second to none, while the latter was a descendant of the Yuki clan which possesses the rare Keke Genkai ice release. However, from the perspective of their joint storylines, it brought things full circle. This forms the second layer of Zabuza that I'll be discussing in this video. But before that, let's talk about Kirigakure for a while, shall we? The village is one of the five great shinobi villages in the Naruto world but is a very different place from say Kumogakure or Konohagakure. A society that resembled a hierarchical caste system after its founding, the Mist Village went through gruesome times. That time gave infamy to the village which ultimately resulted in it being called the Bloody Mist instead of simply the Mist. The reason behind the bloodiness was Kirigakure's Ninja Academy's cruel system of graduation where students had to fight to the death and only those who survived could advance in the ranks. Such a bloody system combined combined with the massive distrust between comrades, resulted in a shinobi culture that valued secrecy and espionage above all else. Zabuza, like the other Miss Ninja, grew up in such hostile circumstances and regarded people as nothing but tools. Of course, there are outliers like Okitake, the Jinchuriki of Saiken, who wasn't as monstrous of a shinobi but defected from the mist in like manner. In any case, the bloody mist era led to the village becoming a place that produced seriously powerful fighters and assassins like the Seven Swordsmen and Kisame Hoshigaki. The two prominent men from the Mist in the series, Kisame and Zabuza, both were a product of the Mist. On the one hand, unforgiving yet skilled shinobi who adhered to their ninja ways even while being part of shady organizations, while on the other hand, they each had a beating heart. I've already touched upon Kisame at length in what is by far one of the most popular videos on my channel. As far as Zabuza is concerned, even though he used Haku during his life, he realized how much that individual meant for him and decided to kill himself in order to die alongside Haku in penance for his sacrifice. When they were resurrected, Haku had no idea what had transpired after his death. When Kakashi had told him this, Haku realized that underneath all the false machismo, Zabuza didn't consider him a tool, but rather a fellow shinobi. He couldn't very well express the sentiments he had because of the way he was brought up and the fact that it was sacrificed, the mission. I've already discussed how cool Zabuza looked when he was first introduced. I'm sure a lot of you will feel the same way, but the real essence of Zabuza lies in his death. Being introduced so early on in the series, he nonetheless had an emotional impact like no other. The Land of Waves arc, coupled with the subsequent arcs, really gave Naruto its legendary status in the shonen world. If you like this video, you can show your support by subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. As I'm writing this, I'm coming close to 400 subs and I would like to thank everybody that has supported me up until now. I hope you have a great day and again, if you've reached the end, well, thanks for watching.